Okay, in this video we're going to look at how to work with uh, indices where the indice is a negative number. So for example, something like a to the negative three or two to the negative two. Okay, how are we supposed to handle something like that? So far we've only been looking at uh, positive indices or indices that have zero. So two to the power of two, that equals two times two. We know what that means. And four to the power of zero, that equals one. Anything to the power of zero equals one. Okay, so what do we do with these negative indices? All right, here's how to think about it. Let's say we had uh, an equation like x to the power of two divided by x to the power of four. Okay, the second index law tells us that to work that out, we go x to the power of two minus four. When we're dividing two uh, things with the same base but different indices, we go the first base, the first power minus the second power to that same base. Okay, so two minus four is gonna give us x to the power of negative two. Okay, so we've got this uh, negative indice here, x to the power of negative two. Well, let's see how we arrive at that result. Let's look at this, uh, write this out a different way. x squared is the same as x times x, and we're dividing it by x to the power of four, which is the same as x times x times x times x. Okay, now if we cancel these x's out, this x and that x, this x and that x, they all cancel out. On the top, now we've just got one. And on the bottom, we've got x times x, which is the same as x squared. Okay, so that's actually what x to the power of negative two means. It means that you've got a fraction with one on top and on the bottom, you've got that same thing with the base and the power, but the power is actually positive, but it's on the bottom. Okay, so when you see a negative uh, power in an indice, that's what it means. It means you can think of it as a fraction with that power considered as a positive on the bottom of the fraction. Okay, now you might be wondering why do we have one, how did this one get on top here? We had x times x and then we had a one all of a sudden. Well, I should just explain. If you think about it as on top here we had x squared and down the bottom here we had x times x and this was also x squared. These, these two x's that we ended up using as a cancellation were also x squared. So we had x squared minus x squared. So x squared divided by x squared. So x squared divided by x squared, if we use our index rule, that's gonna give us x to the power of two minus two, which is x to the power of zero. So actually on top, after we canceled out, we had x to the power of zero, once these, all these x's were canceled out. Um, you can say we had x to the power of zero on both top and bottom if you like, it's not gonna change anything because x to the power of zero is equal to one. Okay, so in fact, this is a one, which means it sort of disappears. X times X times one is just X times X. So that be, we can ignore that. But up here, there's nothing to multiply the uh, one by anymore. So this one is actually gonna show up now. So that's where this one has come from. It was X to the power of zero, which is one. And because there's nothing to multiply it by, the only thing we can write is one. Okay, now let's express what we've learned about negative indices in a, in a general form. So any time we've got some uh, value like a, and it's raised to the power of a negative value like x, so a to the power of negative x, we can express that in this way, one divided by a to the power of x, and x is expressed positively without the negative. Okay, this is uh, necessary, this rule. This is actually the seventh index law. This index law is necessary because there's an important convention in mathematics, which is that whenever you've got a, uh, whenever you've got indices, you need to express them as positive indices. Okay, negative indices, are, you know, they make things complicated, difficult to work with. So we always want to try and express any indices as positives if we can. So if you get given three to the power of negative four, okay, what you want to rewrite that as is one divided by three to the four. That's the kind of uh, answer, the kind of expression that you wanna use. 
Uh, you want to you want to avoid negative indices and turn them into positive indices wherever possible. Okay, let's do a couple of examples just to make sure we. Okay, let's say we've got x to the power of negative four. Okay, according to our index law, x to the power of negative uh, four is going to be expressed as one over x to the power of four. Okay, that one's nice and easy. Okay, now let's try this one. We've got two times m to the power of negative four times n to n squared. Okay, let's express that in a better way. So we've got two and we've got n squared and there's nothing we can really do with those. We can't simplify those at all. But this m to the negative four, that's actually one over m to the power of four. Or, that's, or rather, that's how we want to express it. We want to express it that way. Well, if we combine these two things together, then this is what it's going to look like. The two times n squared is actually over one. Anything that you've got in mathematics, if you've got a three, you can consider that to be three over one. Three divided by one is three. A is actually a over one. Okay, anything can be considered as itself divided by one. That's one way to look at it. Okay, so if we look at look at it that way, we've got two n squared divided by one. We've got a fraction times a fraction. We can multiply the top by the top and the bottom by the bottom. So that's going to end up with two n squared times one is just two n squared divided by one times m to the four is just m to the four. So we end up with this. We started with two m to the negative four times n squared, and this is what we ended up with. So the positive parts of it, the parts that didn't have negative indices, they ended up on top, and the thing that had the negative indice ended up on the bottom. Okay, so remember that you've got a, a mixed kind of a mixed thing with some positive indices, negative indices. The po the bits without the negative indices will stay on top of the fraction, and the negative indices will go on the bottom. All right, let's try one more. Okay, the last one we'll look at is four divided by a to the negative three. Let's see what happens with that. All right, we've got a to the negative three, which we know is actually one over, or it's better expressed as one over a to the power of three. So that's on the bottom of this fraction. And on the top of the fraction, we've got four. Okay, now, as we said before, four can be considered as four divided by one. It's the same thing. Four and four divided by one, it's the same thing. And if we write this a different way, if we write divided by one over a to the power of three, I've just rewritten that in a different looking way. It's the same equation though. Then if you remember back in year seven maths, you should have learned this, that if you've got a fraction divided by a fraction, there's an easy way to do it. What you do is flip the second fraction upside down and you can change it to a multiplication. It's just a neat little trick that works. So I've flipped the second fraction upside down and I've turned it into a multiplication. And when I multiply the top by the top and the bottom by the bottom, this is what I end up with. 4a to the power 3 divided by 1, which is just 4 times a to the power of three. We don't need to put the one under there if we don't want. So that's what we ended up with. So notice this, we had a negative indice on the bottom of a fraction and all that happened was it jumped up the top and became a positive indice. Okay, so that's kind of like the opposite of the index law which said if you've got a to the negative x, then you end up with a to the positive x on the bottom of a fraction well, it turns out the reverse is also true. If you've got a negative indice on the bottom, then that's going to go up the top and become a positive. Uh, it's going to go on top of the fraction and with a positive index, a positive power. And that's what we see happening here. So remember that. Okay, let's do a couple of tougher worked examples. Make sure we've got this all under control. All right, here's one. We've got a squared times b to the negative 3, and that's all being multiplied by a to the negative 5 times b. Now, using our index laws, we've got some like bases here, so we can apply the uh, earlier index laws that we learned, a to 
plus, because we're multiplying these uh, indices with the same base, plus negative 5. Okay, and that's being multiplied by b to the negative 3 and plus b to the power of 1, so it's a 1. All right, now let's simplify that. 2 plus negative 5 is negative 3, so we've got a to the negative 3, and b negative 3 plus 1 is b to the negative 2. So we've got negative indices, and we know what to do with those. We create a fraction with 1 on top, and we make them positive and put them on the bottom of the fraction. So that's what we would end up with. 1 over a cubed b squared. Okay, let's try another one. Okay, so here's a tough looking one. Let's see if we can uh, simplify this at all. So we've got 2 divided by 3. That's the first thing to note. So 2 divided by 3. And then we've got x uh, to the 4 divided by x. And we've got y to the 2 divided by y to the 5. Now this 2 to the 3, there's no indices involved there, so we're just going to leave that as it is for the moment. But this x to the 4 divided by x, we can use one of the index laws. We can go x to the 4 minus 1. That's x to the 1, and it's a division, so 4 minus 1. And we've got y to the 2 divided by y to the 5, same base, so we can go 2 minus 5. Okay, now when we rewrite that, we get 2 over 3, x to the power of 3, and then y, 2 minus 5 is negative 3. So we've got that. And we want to rewrite that without the negative indice. So we're going to have 2 over 3. x to the power of 3 is going to be on top because it's positive. It's going to stay on top. And on the bottom, we're going to have y to the power of 3. This, we're going to just put the y to the power of 3 on the bottom without the negative indice. The negative indice tells us to put it on the bottom. So that's what we end up with. All right, let's do one more. Make it a real toughie. Okay, so here's a nasty looking one. But uh, it's not that hard if we just know how to follow the rules. So the first thing to note is we've got to decide, do we do what's inside the bracket first? Do we try and you know fix all that up? Or do we do what's, uh, do we take care of this negative two indice outside first? Okay, Bodmas tells us that we want to take care of any brackets or other first, brackets or of or indices, things like that first. So that means we're going to get rid of this negative two outside, try and simplify that part first. So if you remember your earlier index laws, we're going to have two to the power of negative two times m to the power of 3 times negative 2. And that's going to be divided by n to the power of negative 2 times negative 2. OK, now that's going to simplify out as 2 to the power of negative 2 is going to come out to 1 on 2 squared. m to the power of 3 times negative 2 is going to be m to the power of negative 6 and n to the power of negative 2 times negative 2 is going to be n to the power of negative 4. Sorry, it's po positive 4 because negative and negative is a positive. OK, and we can simplify that. This m to the negative 6, that's got to go on the bottom. So we've got the 1's not going to... Uh, we don't need to rewrite the 1, so we've just got m... That's on the bottom, rather. m to the power of 6 on the bottom. 2 to the power of 2 is 4. And because this n to the power of plus 4, that's still on the bottom, there's what we end up with. So, And we've got to put something on top, so we'll put a 1 on top. So we end up with 1 divided by 4 times m to the power of 6 times n to the power of 4. OK, let's summarize what we've learned. Okay, so first we've got the seventh index law, and that can be expressed in two ways. It's really the same thing, just two different ways of saying it. So the probably more typical way to express it is to say this, a to the power of some negative number, a negative indice, 
is expressed as 1 divided by a to the power of that positive indice. Okay, the second thing we should try and remember is that we need to try to express negative indices as positives. So something like 3 to the negative 2 should be expressed as 1 over 3 squared. That's the way to, that's the way to express it. The next thing is that 3 equals 3 to the power of 1. And that's true of anything. Anything equals itself to the power of 1. Okay, that's useful because sometimes when we want to multiply, you know, if we're multiplying indices, then we need to multiply, we need to have something to multiply it by. So you can consider this to be a 1. Anytime there's no power indicated, you can consider you've got a power of 1 there to work with. Okay, so there we go. That's the information summarized that needs to be written down. Thanks very much. You can pause the video here, and I hope you enjoyed watching.